Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika's Den. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So, guys, this is my BMF recap review, all right? Season 2, Episode 3, Devil's Night, y'all. It's going down, okay? It's all in the title. We know if it's Devil's Night, then there's going to be a lot of stuff popping on. It's going to be some chaos. It's going to be some craziness. It's going to be some fires. It's going to be some stuff burning. We're going to get some history lessons, some real-life facts in the mix of all of this drama, okay? And we're going to try to see how Terry and Meech is going to make their way through. Of course, Terry got this daggone other car company that's coming after him. K-9 is still out here in the streets being his crazy self. And speaking of Halloween, which is usually the day before Devil's Night or the day after Devil's Night, baby. We got Lamar popping up like he daggone Michael Myers in the Halloween movies, all right? What is going on? <laughs> is this the new daggone, you know, villain, horror freaking... Man, what the hell is Lamar, okay? Child, we about to find out, okay? And we also got B. Mickey trying to make it in these streets and get the heck away and survive against daggone Detective Bryant because he's just another one of a different kind of monster that is coming after him. So let's go ahead and get into this episode, take it from the top, y'all. Now, we started out with... You know, Terry letting us know that their mom did not play. She did not allow them to celebrate Devil's Night or Halloween. But Meech and him still found a way to mask up and get back at the MFers that owed them. Okay. And we start out with, you know, actually Charles and Meech and Terry as kids chasing down somebody who apparently, you know, they seen near their house. And we got to protect our own property out here on this street. OK, we cannot wait around because more than likely the police is not going to be coming. No fire trucks is going to be coming. It's probably going to take them too long to get there, even if they are coming. So we got people that's out on the street trying to watch and protect their own things. And they're chasing them down the street. And we're also seeing other people walking. And we start to learn that Devil's Night actually dates all the way back to the 1800s. This was something that more so just started out as simple little pranks in the beginning, okay? We get some Vaseline on door handles. We get some egg in the neighbor's houses, but of course it starts to advance. It gets worse after the 1970s and around 1984, we have more than 880 homes that are burned, okay? So we're seeing Terry and Meech and them chasing this guy, you know, as they're narrating. And at one point you see that he dropped the kerosene thing that he had. And Charles is just saying, come on back. You know, when they get back to the house, Lucilla's asking what happened. And he's like, man, we chased them off. Okay. Ain't nobody going to mess with our house. He was telling, letting her know that Meech was basically, you know what I'm saying? Right out front. He was in the head and she was like, good. She calls them all around so that they could say this daggone prayer and make sure that the devil is not going to touch their daggone house. Okay. Is going to pass them right on by. And of course, at this point, they are starting to say that this is something that the whole community has to get involved in. It has now went from this being one night to something that can last up to a week. And when these fires happened in you know, 1980, it actually was something that had buildings burning for three days. And so, you know, now we know that this is something we have to watch out for. So Charles basically is standing by that window like he Malcolm X, honey, saying he about to guard his. I said, I know that's right. Now we go from that to actually seeing Terry coming down and saying, hey, we had a good day last night, yesterday, didn't we? And Charles is saying, yeah, he counting up these receipts. And he's saying ever since they brought Denise on, they can now see a profit. It's making a big difference. I said, OK, that's what we like to hear. That's what we want to see. All right. And, you know, Terry basically starts to tell him, well, a lot of cars is not going to want to be out here driving on Halloween and Devil's Night so we can make extra money with that, too. And for once, hallelujah, praise the Lord. OK, Charles is actually in agreement and he is saying, yeah, that's a good idea. He's all for it. But he was like, we have to make sure that there's not going to be no refusing rides. You know, we're going to make damn sure we ain't throwing customers out. And so he's like, yeah, cool. You know, um. Nicole is saying, come on, we got to go. We got to get to school. So Terry throws her the keys and says, wait in the car. Now, on top of them already having to deal with Halloween and Devil's Night Child. And you know that their drugs got taken when, you know, Detective Brian and them made this drug bust. We are now also seeing on the news and the Mr. Terry putting on his shoes to go that last week, 8,700 pounds of cocaine, y'all, was seized. All right. In Florida, I think it was. So now... 
you know, this, of course, is going to have an effect on them. Anytime something like this happens, that means that it's going to be a big drought. You're not going to have no supply anywhere. This could be the worst time that this could happen. And on top of it being something where it's going to be a problem for the dealers, you also will have people that will be sticking up each other, breaking into houses and everything, trying to get their fix. So now that is double, double, double trouble on these streets, okay? Now we moving over to Meech, honey, and Meech over here getting it in with Miss Monique. They playing Make It Last Forever. I said, okay, I did not have, you know, seeing Meech cheeks on my damn 2023 bingo card. You know, and not only was that a little surprise for me, honey, but when they finished, she was about to light up and she was like, oh, no, boo, you ain't about to smoke up in here. You know, the baby's going to be coming in here a minute. Plus, I can't have no contact high and I can't have that smell on me when I'm going into work. You know, he's telling her she the best legal aid they ever had. And she's like, yep, I sure am. And I want to keep it that way. And he going up in the room talking about come here, baby girl. You know, I miss you. And it's so good to see you. And Zoe over here talking about some watch out because she be drooling on you. And Monique and him got a little girl. So he was like, nah, she just do that with her big sister, okay? She don't do that with daddy. Now he gets a call where he's like, what's going on, cuz? What happened? Whatever have you. And old Jerry Curl Cuz is saying that, you know, he got robbed. I said, wait a minute, Jerry Curl Cuz got left with the drugs for two seconds and already he got robbed. I said, Meech, I told you one way or another, that deal may not have been the best thing for you, especially to leave him in charge there, but we shall see, okay? We still gonna keep an eye on you, cuz. You know, Meech was like, what you mean is gone? And so now he gotta figure that out. And of course, this is happening the worst time that it possibly can because they just had all these drugs that were seized so where the heck is he gonna be getting drugs from right inquiring minds want to know you know he telling zoe that he gonna come back with halloween costumes for the both of them she over here calling him uncle meach you know of course he think everything is good he think lamar's you know dead so he done made this house a home for himself i see now, in the meantime, Terry's over here riding with Nicole. They talking about what they used to do on Halloween and his tire go out, the car going every which way. I said, no, say it ain't so, say it ain't so. And you know they wasn't putting on seatbelts like that, especially in the backseat. We ain't get them laws to wait later. So Nick he is actually, you know, very lucky that she did not get more injured than she did. She just ended up hitting her head really hard. And we hearing, you know, of course, Terry screaming out her name, trying to make sure she okay because they done went over into the side of the damn road, honey. So I say they got a lot going on. Okay. That's an understatement. Now, you know, moving on from that, we basically see of course, you know, mama coming to see and daddy coming to see and make sure that they are okay, checking them out. We see in Terry, I'm sorry, Meech going to K-9. So, of course, he's going to try to go to K-9 to see if he could get some help there. And in the midst, as he's walking in, we see in that this guy is basically trying to get slick and, you know, cheat at a card game. He's doing the old cards up the sleeve trick, all right, and got busted quick, fast, and heavy, and they putting him out. And Meech asking, he come over and sit and talk with K-9 for him minute you know he asking him what he's sipping on and K9 said he's sipping on some water he said well what the heck do you do for fun because K9 said baby I don't drink I don't smoke and I damn sure don't go hanging out in clubs he said what I do for fun is make that damn money I said I know that's right K9 okay on that we can agree and so they go ahead in the back to talk and of course me just letting him know like yo my cuz got you know, Rob, so is it possible that I could get something on consignment? And K9 is like, come back and see me in a couple of weeks. I can't do nothing right now. And so he was like, in a couple of weeks, I can't wait no damn weeks. And, you know, he pretty much telling Meech, I don't know what to tell you. So Meech was like, come on, man, you know, it's a drought. And K9 says he actually making more money withholding than selling. So Meech says there's no disrespect, but you know, he knows his business, business savvy. He says, you know, I'm loyal. I'll do whatever you want me to do. You're the only plug I got. So, um, K-9 said, don't try to throw my own words back at me. And he was like, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm actually letting you know that I've been listening and learning from you, right? And that's one thing that I have given K-9. You know, when we see him in episode one, he just was coming, being disrespectful all while, you know, demanding respect. But in episode two, we saw more of him actually teaching different things to Meech. And it seemed like, okay, there is something there amongst all of the craziness, right? And so he always tries to drop a little knowledge on 
meets every visit that they have so in the midst of this he's like come on it gotta be something that i could do for you you know tell me what it is and so k9 actually says remember that big mouth dude that was here the last time you was here and of course we all do and we knew that it was going to be something happening with that because the guy was too daggone extra he basically tells me that he wants him to go and track him down and bring him to him he wants him alive you know he says that he owes him or whatever and he wants him to deliver for him so he was like that could probably help and then I could probably do something for you Meech tells him done I said are you sure Meech so you know he got had to leave from there now he does tell him before he's leaving remember blood don't make you family I would make sure I check that story out and he's basically saying that loyalty does right so in other words he's saying that just because your cousin called you and said that he got robbed you know make sure that that story is actually real now, now some more knowledge from mr K9, okay now in the meantime they checking these tires honey they at this daggone accident site the car's getting you know put on the truck so it could get towed away and nicole is at the ambulance they saying she got a concussion should she feel dizzy any kind of nauseous you know or anything bring her to the emergency room Lucilla's like you hear that Nicole if you feel anything let us know and Charles is basically saying to Terry listen these tires got slashed on purpose all right is there anybody you know that would want to do this Terry over here talking about some nah this probably was just a prank from devil's night and Charles is giving him the side eye he don't completely believe that story right He's more than likely thinking it probably got something to do with Terry when he was out on the streets. But Terry, I think, already has a pretty a good idea. Or at least he will figure it out. That is this dad of the, you know, the people that he had the competition with that was pissed off about him taking their flyers. Okay. So when he says it's probably a devil's prank, you know, devil's night prank. Of course, Daddy Flynn was giving him the side eye with that. Now, you know, the most important thing is that Nicole wasn't hurt because it could have been way worse. Now we move on and we see in Detective Jen looking at this board and we see that, you know, Detective Brian comes in and says, listen, those is not even the 12th Street Boys no more, okay? They have combined the 12th Street Boys and the 50 Boys and made them BMF. So they already up on the whole daggone, you know, um change of the names or whatever right and she's like wait you talk to them without me and he said yeah i had to hurry up and talk to them before they got lawyers and she was like so much for transparency and he's telling her that he's sorry so he was like you know now you know this is what it is and we gotta go ahead and go after this meach we gotta get him we're not gonna let him get away with this and she was like well damn why you got such a hard on for daggone meach like what's the issue i said girl you asking the same damn questions we asking because i'm still trying to understand you know he's saying he gotta take him down for good and she was like why you got such a hard on for him so he was like oh i'm gonna get him or whatever he's destroying the community i said he ain't freaking worried about no damn you know destroying the community and she was like you know bringing up Moby Dick and he said yep I'm damn straight I'm trying to you know Ahab his ass and she was like well you do know that he actually never caught Moby Dick and they argue back and forth with him saying yes he did and her saying no he didn't okay I think everybody have their own interpretation of that and so of course when the cops step in the room that he was calling Prince before she asked him did he ever catch Moby Dick and he says no of course he never caught that big fish right but again i'm still confused it's still not making sense to me as to why he's going so hard he didn't even freaking at least not the way that we saw get along with his partner like that not saying that he was supposed to wish him death but not let's not act like you wasn't mixing it up with um meach up until that point so for you to just turn and be going so hard on meach like that but you're not going hard on k9 who we've seen do way more you're not going hard with damn lamar who we've seen doing way more and who we actually see on the damn loose and you know put the damn cop in the show hold and all of that but you going so hard on freaking meach it just does not make sense to me but you know what i'm saying we gonna go with it because that's the way they wrote it so in the meantime you know that cop was actually coming in to say Beckwith is on a damn war behalf about finding either Flannery or Silas. Like right now, y'all not bringing in nothing. Y'all not doing nothing. And then that's when, of course, she asked him about the whole you know, Moby Dick and basically Detective Brian is like, yo, you think I'm going to listen to him? He don't know shit. And you know what I'm saying? He go ahead and he walk out. So, um, 
you know, we get Meech coming of all freaking people. He decides to ask B. Mickey for help with hunting down this guy that K-9 told him about. And I said, really, that's who you want to bring with you, Meech? Are you sure? Okay. Now, freaking B. Mickey is asking him, well, what do he look like? Do you got a picture of him? He like, man, do I look like I'm walking around with damn pictures of people? He like, I don't know, but I do remember, you know what I'm saying, what he looked like a little bit. And I remember that he had this tattoo. So he was like, I'm going to just need you to have my back and come with me. We can't take no chances. We got this drought. My cousin lost the money and, um, you know, the drugs in Cleveland or whatever have you. So... I need you to hold me down and see what the heck has been going on and what's, you know what I'm saying, been up to. And in the midst of him talking to B. Mickey about this, he then learns about, you know, Terry and Nicole being in this accident. And he like, yo, get the hell out of here. Like, what else is going to happen? You know, from the time he done finished getting it in with Monique, he haven't had a moment of peace. So now he runs there to check on Nicole. You know, she on the couch pretending to be on sleep. He coming, Nicole, Nicole, you okay? You okay? Nikki, Nikki, you okay? And she laughing talking about yeah i just had to play it off and let mama and them know that i'm not feeling well take advantage of the situation so that i could stay home from school and he like yo i'm telling on you or whatever and terry come walking in like what are you doing here you know and he was like of course i had to see what's going on he was like why do you even tell me about this and terry is basically like well you was just fighting me two damn minutes ago okay and he was like yeah well i don't care y'all still my family or whatever the case may be and if you need me or nikki beat need me i'm still gonna be here I got your back, all right? And that's what we like to hear. That's the way it's supposed to go. We could argue and fight with each other all day, but at the end of the day, if somebody step out, oh, step in and do something, you know, we gonna hold each other down. So Terry says thank you, but he got it covered and he goes walking off. And Meech was basically telling Nikki, like, yo, I'm going to tell mama that you was lying. And she's like, no, you're not. And she believed me, okay? So she like, shoot, I'm getting away with it. Now, Terry, go ahead and talk to Markeisha. And y'all didn't never correct me, child. I done changed this lady name and was calling her Mariska this whole damn time, okay? Gave her a whole new name. But Markeisha, okay... He go see her and see him what he could do. And she was like, look, your insurance don't cover this. They don't cover, you know, when you're, um, something is done to your tires or whatever. And he was like, is there anything you could do to fix it? And she basically was saying, no, okay. Anything that I can do would make me lose my job. And of course he don't want her to do something that's going to make her lose her job. Okay. You know? And so he was like, I can't believe this. And you know what I'm saying? Now we just was getting ahead and now we got to go ahead and, you know, basically come out our pockets again. So when he picked up the brochure, she's telling him like, yeah, those people are actually pissed that you keep messing up um, they brochures or whatever and using it. I told you about that. And she said, you know, the guy's name is Cleet. And he was like, these is the MFers that, you know, probably did this to my tires. This is all they for. Of course, when he started yelling and screaming, cause he's like, they threatened him at the airport. She like, yo, use your inside voice. This is not a damn hood right here. We got customers in here and stuff like that. And you're scaring them. You know, you got to calm your behind down and step outside for a minute. Of course, he's talking about, don't talk to me like a child. And she's like, okay, Okay, well then don't act like one. I said, yeah, Terry, okay, you can't be acting a damn fool in there. You know, so he go ahead and step outside. She was saying that she would meet him out there for, you know, after a minute or whatever the case may be. Give her a second. He needs to get some air. Okay. One, two, three, breathe. Now we see damn Lamar here in this damn morgue. His cousin over here telling this guy, this dead person that he fixing up. Your family going to see you looking pretty. And Lamar jumping up, child, getting up out of the damn body bag like he freaking Michael Myers at Halloween. All right. <laughs> his cousin was even like yo what the hell is wrong with you give me some kind of warning now he getting up and ready to steal the damn man shoes off his feet talking about he need these gators okay what size is he he said you can't do that that's real disrespectful you never touch a dead man stuff you know and he was like that's basically a violation and so lamar is like well you know I got some business to handle, okay? Let me get those. Let me see those. And he's basically looking at the clothes that his cousin got on. I said, oh, Lord, my Lamar about to be out here on the streets, child. Now, Miss Markeisha and... um. You know, Terry take it over to the restaurant and he, he she's saying, I love your hair. She was like, it looked better than that fro that you was rocking, looking like you was damn Isaac from the love boat. 
and she having him some calamari, okay, trying to put him on, telling him he got to taste new things, talking about you never had calamari, it's deep fried squid, he like, ah, oh, nah, I'm straight, I'll pass, she like, come on now, she was like, just because you can, you know, come from the street, don't mean you got to stay street, don't be scared, okay, take you a little bite and see what it's about, and so he got ahead and tasted or whatever, he was basically like, mm, not bad, okay, it's giving me a little bit of chicken and a little bit of shrimp, and so, you know, they over here with the googly eyes back and forth or whatever the case may be. And he was just basically, you know, saying that um, he got to make damn cleat pay with some hood rules. All right. And she was like, you don't want to step to them dudes. Trust me, and especially without no backup. And he was like, I could defend myself. And she was like, yeah, you kill me. She was like, all that stubbornness. You must be a Capricorn. So he starts laughing and he was like, yeah, you know, I am a Capricorn. What about it? She was saying that, you know, she's into astrology. And I said, yeah, Terry is a Capricorn. Okay, fun fact. We got the same birthday. All right, January 10th. I'm just saying shout out to Terry. Now, so anyway, she was saying that it basically means a lot, right? It tells them that he's ambitious. And that um he's disciplined, that he sticks his mind to things, that he's persistent as he want to be. So he was like, yeah, that's definitely true because you see, I've been persistent with you, all right? I'm still chasing you. And they both laugh about that. And so, you know, he was asking her, or is she happy? And she was like, man, I don't really got time to think about all of that. I work hard. I do what I got to do. You know, I'm trying to be busy, working late, getting my job done and all of that kind of stuff. And now it's going to be extra busy because they're anticipating all these fires and they she was basically saying a lot of times they think it's the people from the city that's burning it up but it's actually people from other places or whatever that don't even live here that be burning it up and there's also people in the burbs that want to get that insurance money that be burning it up but she was like they don't talk about that on the news of course they don't right and so then we get to zoe standing outside her school she talking about how this boy done invited her to go trick-or-treating and sitting there giggling and who should pop up you know stand in the again like he a damn monster um Lamar he watching her of course that's gonna be one of the first places that he gonna go and she looks up and sees him and child just as fast as that bus go by Lamar done disappeared like he a ghost in the damn night okay her mother running up on her talking about Zoe you don't hear me calling you girl let's go and she's like I just saw daddy she was like no it's no way you saw him you must be mistaken I said please listen to y'all damn kids when they telling you something I know you think Lamar is dead but kids ain't gonna just make something like that up pay attention okay in the meantime, be Mickey out here walking out to smoke a damn cigarette. And who should be there to light it for him but Detective Bryant? You know, talking about, I missed you. I ain't seen you in a while. So B. Mickey says he was busy. He said, okay, that's why. Well, let's catch up now. Let's go ahead for a ride so we can catch up. Okay, so now he out with him. Okay, and they out in the middle of damn broad daylight. But nobody ain't see them yet. Okay, so B. Snitchy is going to walk, take a ride with Bryant. Now... You know, in the meantime, Meech done found the guy at the tattoo place that pretty much he feels like could give him the information on where old Big Mouth is at, right? And he don't toss him all around the tattoo, tattoo parlor saying, you know, give me Travis address or this going to be in your damn eye with one of the damn tattoo pins. So, of course, the guy go ahead and look it up and give it to Meech so that he could go ahead and do what he needs to do with him. I said, child, yeah, I mess, okay? And Meech just hurried up and snatched that, you know, paper out his hand. Like, why the hell was it taking you so long to tell me where the hell to go? So, you know, the phone rings. And, of course, here go Monique saying, yo, Zoe done said she saw Lamar. Okay, I might be bugging. And he's like, no, stop having her watch them damn scary movies. Okay, it's no way. He's dead, dead. He was like, I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it with my own two eyes. And while I understand Meech going so hard and thinking that, it's like, did you make sure he was dead? Did you check his post, Meech, and see that it was nothing there? No, you didn't. Believe Zoe, okay? Believe Zoe, y'all. So now, in the meantime, Terry take his behind to this car place. He going all crazy, acting a damn fool in the damn office, asking for cleats saying he going to pay for this, and they come walking out saying, yo, what's the problem? And Terry said, you did that to my tires. The guy tried to get cute. Like, oh, well, then you got the message, didn't you? And some other guys come walking out from the back, and Terry thinks about it and realizes, hmm, maybe my Keisha did have a damn point, right? I'm by myself, and it's all of them. So he basically walks away and walks out. But we know that's not going to be the end of it, right?
Then we see in Detective Bryant, he bringing damn, you know, B. Mickey to where these damn bodies is being held in these containers. And so, of course, B. Mickey's like, what the hell are you bringing me here for? For a minute, his heart probably drops and he probably thought he was about to put him in one of them bags. But he essentially tells him that Cato was in there. And of course, he's like, yo, you lying. The hell, she ain't in here. He's like, yes, she is. She didn't have no family. She never had nobody that came and picked her up. Basically... Detective Bryant is going to try every which way to keep reminding and keep keeping his damn foot on B snitchy neck, okay, so that he can't have no way to back out and he will have to help him. So he sees that, you know, maybe he's slacking off a little bit and he needs that reminder. So not only does he say that she is in one of these daggone containers, but he also gives him a paper and now shows him that Cato was supposedly pregnant. There's a sonogram, you know, of the baby that was done with her daggone autopsy that shows that she was about to have a baby and of course he is saying it is yours so now we got another situation like tommy where he finding out the daggone girl was pregnant and he kills her so he's talking about some congratulations and damn b mickey starts throwing up all over the place okay y'all he's hurting he's hurting real bad so of course you know, he's telling him it's bullshit, but Brian says, no, it's not. You killed the mother of your unborn child. I said, you know what, Brian, you are sick, sick, sick. So he says, tell me that he got a new hookup with a new plug. And he was like, you feel me or whatever the case may be. You got to get me to agree to this meet and I will do the rest. And he basically walks away. So now... Child B. Mickey is in some shit. Okay, he's way, way, way in over his head. Now, we got Meech coming in, creeping in this damn house, looking for Travis Child. The way they shot it when he first was walking in, it looked like a daggone video game. Okay, he got the gun out, swerving all around. So, we see this little girl running like, mommy, 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 child, we got a daggone drug addict in here with this little girl. Meech over here asking, when's the last time the little girl ate? Mama talking about some, you know, oh, she good, don't worry about her, you know, worry about me. And if you give me some of that stuff, I'll tell you where Travis is. And she, oh, she's throwing everything and trying to offer Meech everything okay but the kitchen sank in order for her to get some of that stuff because she want to get right and Meech basically goes walking out the door while she's still yelling after him I will do this I will do that I will do the other and the other and the other meanwhile mama Flannery child Lucille and Charles is up in the church okay we in the church we praising the Lord honey this church scene has so much going on at one daggone time we had Snoop with this daggone here that's a conversation within itself we got the still feeling the spirit just to enjoy herself hallelujah amen thank you jesus and smiling at charles looking all proud of him while he playing his guitar charles sitting here yeah yeah you know and they smiling 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 she clapping 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 glory and the next thing you know charles start with the girl that's playing the guitar and they having their own little session going on and Lucille smile turned into a daggone frown so daggone quick she caught that and said wait a minute y'all doing a little too much okay a little too much rocking and rolling for me I'm gonna need you to pull it back all right her eyes did not leave them <laughs> for the rest of the daggone song and in the meantime Snoop over here with his little rug on his head, okay? So she stopped after church to have a conversation with Pastor Swift and let him know, listen, I don't want to bother you, but things ain't been right in my marriage, okay? I'm starting to have doubts, Father. I'm starting to really feel it. And he says, well, it's useful having doubts sometimes, you know? And she says, mm, yeah, I hear you, but no, I'm having not having like door doubts with the Lord. I'm having doubts about my marriage. My marriage is in trouble, okay? John and I, we've been arguing a lot. And um, I'm just feeling, I'm feeling all kind of crazy on the inside. Lately, we've been lacking intimacy. And so he says, you know, I, you should know some. I found the magazines under the music sheets. And so he said, well, sister, every man has their desires. Okay, that's natural. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. You know, just make sure you're more desirable for him. And, you know, than those women in those magazines. So she was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. that ain't going to cut it. I tried, Pastor. I tried that. Okay. I even bought a little outfit. I said, not telling him about the outfit, Lucille. She said, the spirit just didn't move him. Okay. So he said, Says, look, 
is your attitude, your spirit. He said, you got to find the strength to humble yourself. Okay. I said, wait a minute, pastor. What are we talking about here? You know, you got to be submissive to your husband. So she said, well, I'm not one that easily submits to no man. He says, well, I suggest you make it easier. Okay. You pray to it to be easier. You know, so says the Bible. <laughs> okay. She said, thank you, pastor. Thank you. You know, but Lucille was giving him a little side eye. He said, God bless you. And so, you know, Mishka had... And come back in and he's like, wait a minute, you know what I'm saying? She over here, B-I-N-G-O. And me start having some memories and say, I know you. You used to be my babysitter. You used to sing me that song. You don't recognize me. He like Grace and she like Michi, Demetrius, how you been, boy? I said, not the babysitter, okay? The babysitter child that he had back in the days, okay? And so he talking about, yo, that's crazy. You know, she's saying how moms, how pops, and they all smiling or whatever how Nicole and Terry now at this time B Mickey comes in apparently he called him you know and that's what he has stepped out to do and he's asking him did he bring what he asked for and so he got the stuff and he actually got something for old little girl to eat you know they give her the food so she could go sit on the side and eat and give her the stuff so she could go ahead and let him know you know what I'm saying where Travis is, he said, you ain't getting the stuff to you tell me. And then she lets him know that he got this place that's behind the school, you know, and they give the little girl a little happy meal box. OK, from McDonald's. I said, damn, that's sad. All right. It really is. Now, in the meantime, of course, she couldn't waste no time <sighs> to go ahead and get that high. All right. And, um. You know, he hurried up and moved the little girl so that she wouldn't have to watch her doing her thing. I said, Lord of mercy, okay? It's sad, but it's real. That's what used to be going down. Now, as we move along, um, you know, she had said to me, who are you to judge, right? She was like, you're just as addicted. And he said, what you talking about? And she said, you addicted. We all got choices, Michi. She said, I can live and die with mine, can you? You know, because... In his case, he's addicted to the money. That's basically what she was saying. He's addicted to the money in the streets, all right? You may not be addicted to drugs. And she right. Everybody do have a choice. Unfortunately, her choice is hurting herself and in the long run probably going to hurt her damn child. But, you know, nonetheless, I digress moving right along. And so we go from there and... You know, Charles is packing up at the church and old pastor come and decide he going to talk to him. He said, you know, that last song you played, boy, you was doing your thing. OK, you had the saints shouting and screaming. So he say, thanks, pastor. He says, but, um, you know, at home, honey. OK, we got some other things going on. Your wife told me about your problems in the bed. So Charles said, excuse me, say what? He says, listen, ain't nothing to be ashamed of, brother. Charles said, let me tell you something. You better not ever bring up my dad going to bed again, okay? If you don't want me to go ahead and knock you across the damn head. You know, I ain't never hit a man in the cloth before, but you got one more time to say something about my bed out your mouth, and I will break your narrow ass. And so Pastor basically said, listen, brother, with all respect, your wife came and talked to me. Pride often is what makes people fall, honey. And so he he says, you know, he told the pastor, you have been warned. And pastor just went ahead and took his glasses out and said, find a new spot for them damn magazines. Okay. I know Charles was embarrassed that Lucille went to the pastor, honey. But a lot of, you know what I'm saying, people do, honey. Maybe they need some couples therapy, but we know Charles ain't going to do that. So now when Terry come walking in, here comes daddy because, of course, he's frustrated with what happened with the tires. He's frustrated that the damn pastor done called him out. As soon as Terry come walking in, he talk about, you know who did this, didn't you? You know, is this because of what you was doing out in the street with them daggone drugs? And it's really not, you know. But at this point, he's having an attitude and figuring Terry going to lie to him anyway. So he walking off with a freaking attitude. And I was really like, Terry, why you didn't just tell him the truth about the damn you know, people and the fact that they threaten you so that they can know what's what. But, you know, Terry didn't decide to do that. You know, he over here talking about something. You back in the drug game and he was like, 
no, I'm not. And he was like, so why is this happening? He was like, you know, we could lose a day's work. And plus, we losing money to replace all these damn things. And we just finally getting started and getting ahead. And we doing this because you back into street shit. And so Terry is like, look, I'm going to fix this. And he was like, oh, we going to fix this my way by making sure that you a real man. And you doing what you supposed to do and making an honest living or whatever the case may be. And so... As usual, they really didn't have a real conversation. Now, when Charles go walking away or whatever, you know, um, the new hire, I can't even think her name, Denise, she starts to say something to Terry, and he's like, what, are you just going to yell at me too? But she was like, no, listen, I love your father, and I respect him to death, but on this, I actually disagree with him or whatever the case may be. And she was like, when things like this happen, we got to fight back, okay? So she know what time it is. So he like... Oh, really? What you talking about? He was like, you work for the GM plant, so you know about cars pretty much, right? And she was like, yep, better than most been. I said, okay, sis, bring it. What you got? So now in the meantime, we got Nicole here carving up this turkey. I mean, turkey, give me mine. Carving up the um pumpkin. And Charles talking about he going to be back soon. So Miss Lucille said, where you going? He going to talk about some. Oh, well. You know, I'm going to help Mabel out with some work she needs done in the house. She said, what about our damn walls? I said, oh, shoot, shout out to Moochie, okay? Because the last time we was on the live talking about episode two, she daggone show was like, girl, look at all these patches all over the walls and the ceiling. And we was like, yeah, right. And we were saying that Charles seems like he's somebody that starts projects and never finishes them, all right? Like he was supposed to be doing this so that the house could be painted and then he just left it like that. And so she called him out on it and told us, girl, it's been two years and this man ain't such a damn thing in here. So she told him, finish up these damn walls that we've been waiting two years to get done. So he said, Nicole, go ahead upstairs and let me and your mother talk. And he walks back over to Lucille and he over here talking about some damn, you know, waiting for Nicole to get upstairs and going to talk about some, um, oh, well. You know, how dare you embarrass me with Pastor Swift? And she said, I needed some advice about our damn marriage. And he basically was like, well, that's not something that you discuss with a stranger. She said, he's not a stranger. He's the pastor. He said, well, he's on his third marriage. And she said, he's a man of God. Don't disrespect him or whatever. And he said, well, when am I going to get some respect around here? And Lucille told my man Charles, when you earn it. I said, woo, bitch, I know that's right. We getting down and dirty now. We getting down and dirty, all right? And Charles said, and went walking his behind on out. I said, Charles, how long you been going over to Mabel House, huh? And what goes on at Mabel House? Because Mabel was over here dancing around, shaking her butt every which way. And Charles up there fixing her damn ceiling fan. And Mabel's walls look good, okay? And she talking about, come on, Charles, show me your moves. Oh, you, you know, he talking about, you doing fine by yourself. And she's like, don't tell me. You know, you got two lefty. She like, come on down here. And she's sitting there swaying and supposed to be, um... You know, sweeping and oh, I know you ain't, you know, not gonna join me. And he took him, I know you ain't damn me. And then he comes down and she like, oh, and Charles over here chuckling and he coming. I said, Charles, first of all, you dancing off beat, honey. Okay, that wasn't even the rhythm, that wasn't even to the damn beat of the song. So I'm like, all right, and they laughing and he dancing all around her in a circle while she dancing and she like, woohoo, Charles, I didn't know you could move like that. Oh, I didn't know you had it in you. So he caught himself and was like, oh, I got to go home, you know. And then she over here trying to give him some money. He was like, Mabel, nah, that's for you and your family. I can't take that. And she says, nah, you're working your time. It's valuable. I respect it. She said, you go ahead and take that money, okay? Please do take it. And so he took it and he said thanks. And, you know, he took his behind home. And I said, yeah, Charles, you should have never been there to the begin with, okay? You should have been home fixing your damn walls like Lucy. Saying, all right so how many of y'all how long y'all think it's gonna take for um charles and mabel to get together let me know put it in the comments do y'all see that or not now in the meantime you know he got the nerve detective brian to be driving with detective jen and having the damn moby dick book in his damn hand i said boy if you don't put that freaking book away and they get a call about you know some ruckus that's going on a fire whatever these people was out here chanting burn it burn it burn it burn it burn it let it burn 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 you know we don't need no water let them Mm -mm, burn all right 
And so they say the fire cruise is on the way, but Detective Chen go running her behind in the daggone house and pulling this guy out. And so he was calling her like, what are you doing? You know, calling her name, but she went in there anyway. And she gets the guy out safely and come to find out he's a veteran. He actually fought, I think it was in the Vietnam War. They discussed how, you know, black people got um, blamed and they was saying how they was killing, you know, women, kids and whoever. And she was like, well, y'all was a big help you know, to um, my family, and I appreciate you. Thank you for your service and all of that kind of stuff. And she get in the car, and we seeing her sitting here burning herself, child. I said, Lord, she basically, you know, that's her thing. That's how she um, deals with all the trauma and different things that she got going on. You can see a whole bunch of burn marks up her daggone arm. She just, you know... Push that damn lighter in and go ahead and burn herself in yellow, whatever, before Detective Brian gets in the car. And then when he gets in, he was like, look, you don't never put yourself in danger or me. You know what I'm saying? That's what we have the damn fire department for. They take care of the fires. And she was like, so, you know, we supposed to just wait and let somebody die, whatever the case may be. She was like, it don't matter whoever else is coming or if we get hurt or whatever the case may be. We just supposed to go in there and try to help as best we can. And Detective Brian said, damn. And we are okay. You on your own with that one. Now, in the meantime, Terry and um, you know, Miss Denise got had in here and they start putting sugar in tanks, and then she had another special one, okay, for Cleet's car, where she was like, Yo, this is gonna dissolve and mess it up, and there's gonna be no trace, they will not know what hit them when it hits them, okay. So he liking Denise, he like, Oh, I need to start messing around, you know what I'm saying, with white people more often. I don't usually go to do no dirt with them, you know. She telling him this will really mess it up, and she said it's gonna have the you know, um, melt the pipe or whatever with a brake fluid go and then there'll be zero evidence of foul play so he said you know usually i don't do dirt with white people but you got me rethinking shit so now um you know they go ahead to um who was it oh they go ahead to your boy travis house now like i said of all people to ask for help B. Mickey is who you bring, Meech. Now, one thing we can say, I know B. Mickey has became B. Snitchy, but one thing we can say about B. Mickey is that he will shoot your ass, okay? That boy will shoot and he will not miss. That's one thing you can count on if you can't count on nothing else. Now, they get here to the house and we see peaches is for the streets, honey. Is that really what K-9 was mad about? K-9 wasn't mad about his mouth. K-9 wasn't mad that he owed him nothing. K-9 was mad because he knew he was getting it in with peaches, okay? He getting down and dirty with peaches and so Meech is like yo I know him I um, mean you know I know her whatever and they go ahead in the house or whatever and of course this man is not trying to be taken in alive he's like y'all in my house get the hell up out of my house you know first they tried to play it off and just have it look like it's something that's a part of devil's night where they burning up his car and when he came outside they was gonna get at him you know then but they was not able to do it and when he backed up in the house they went in there and they just basically having this shootout where he's like what are you doing and you know Meech is telling him I don't want to hurt you I don't want to hurt you so he's saying well put down the damn gun or get the hell up out of my house and sure enough B Mickey comes up <laughs> and ends up freaking killing him and he's like yo we were supposed to take him to damn you know him alive now here come peaches walking up putting the gun on me and he's like yo k9 send me we just here to do what we gotta do with that's concerned we don't care nothing about you and what you was doing here and who you doing it with and she was like well fk9 or whatever the case may be i'm just gonna find another dude and lay up with him okay he ain't stopping nothing so they like what the hell and of course they end up bringing damn travis back to k9 dead and tell him what happened it was like yo he was shooting at us we didn't have no choice and k9 says well you should out of luck you still not gonna get no product because you did not follow what i told you to do so now meech is just looking at their b mickey like we still you know are pretty much in a bad position we ain't get a damn thing done this is a whole ass mess and we still out of product right now they basically um then we have the damn guy from the damn other uh, car thing right he over here having trouble his car. He's, he's completely out of control. Can't control it, right? Payback is a bitch. And he gets, <laughs> has to pull over, whatever the case may be. First, he couldn't stop the car. And sure enough, 
to every of them is on his behind, okay, and come up and give him a good old-fashioned butt kicking, all right, and tell him to stay away from, you know what I'm saying, they shit, okay, did you learn your lesson now, that you should not be messing with us, and Terry go ahead and stop by and see that Marquisha is coming up out the office. So he like, oh, what are you doing here this late? And for some reason, she just don't want to look up him, you know, look at him in his face. She avoiding looking up at him. She's saying she had to come back there for something. And sure enough, when he does pick up her face to look at him, she got a big old black eye. Okay, her husband done got pissed off and beat her in her face. Apparently, this is something he do. I'm thinking maybe he getting hints of Terry coming around there talking to her. But when it's a person like that, they could probably do that for any reason to be honest and so of course Tevi is like oh no I ain't gonna go for that okay I ain't gonna have nobody hurting you I'll step to him or whatever the case may be and of course she's telling him not to and I'm like Lord Terry now not only are you getting involved with this woman when you have your own damn woman at home and child falling in love with her but she's an older woman a married woman and a married abused woman okay that's a lot, Terry. Are we sure we want to do that? I know you cannot help, you know what I'm saying, who you love and definitely don't want to see a woman get hurt. I respect that, but that's going to be a lot extra to take on on top of what we are already dealing with, okay? Now, getting on over to Monique and Zoe, they sitting here playing a game and she get a call. She saying hello and ain't hearing nothing coming back, honey. And then, you know, she go look out the damn door and there's these candies that Lamar always ate that's there. And she definitely looking now like, OK, this ain't no damn ghost that left these freaking candies. You know, even Zoe is like, isn't that the candies that daddy eats? She telling Zoe to go to her damn room and she trying to get Meech on the phone. But Meech and B. Mickey and Terry is over here like laughing it up and bonding it from the store, talking about how they beat that daggone guys behind and all of that. And then Meech is hearing that his cousin got this new car. So Meech is laughing like, oh, it's funny. You know, he got this new ride where he got that money from if he's saying that he lost all the stuff. So obviously, cuz done lied about that. And K9 was actually right with the advice that he gave him. You know, Meech is telling B. Mickey he going to go ahead and follow him to this new connect. And of course, you know, Detective Brian and Jen is on the sidelines waiting. And B. Mickey's supposed to be driving, but all of a sudden, he's just stopping up there and then he want to get out and get on the payphone of course terry i mean meech is behind him like yo what is his problem what does he stop there for what the hell is he doing they was like yo i know he ain't getting out to make no damn call to no freaking chick and we in the middle of supposed to be doing this business deal like is he freaking crazy and he holding up his hand like one second okay like i do when i'm you know need my little break and when i'm um in church, okay, or sometimes in Mozart, you know, when he's doing his four-hour rants, and I gotta say, I'll be back, I'm stepping out for a minute, okay, that is what B. Mickey was doing, and so the next thing you know, we see in this car pulling up, I said, no, 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 and Lamar said, yes, 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 it's me, bitch, it's me, it's me, it's me, okay, pop, 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 pop on that ass, and so, Obviously, they basically show, you know, something else that was real. Meech gets shot and they scream, oh, we got to get him to the hospital. Meech is shot. Meech is shot. Meech is shot. And here come damn detective raggedy ass Brian, y'all, acting like he was the freaking Hulk with Loki. I said, what is wrong with this man? They saying he shot and he need help. He over here, get out the way. I said, stay back. I said, stay back, nigga. Get over there. Get over there. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, get over there. Get down. Get down. And pushing freaking Meech and punching him and all kind of stuff. They like, yo, what the hell is wrong with you? He need an ambulance. I said, stay back. I said, stay back. Jen had to literally come in between and be like, yo, get him in the car. We'll escort you. She like, Brian, come on. What the hell is wrong with you? So now she's starting to see that he is a damn problem too, okay? So I'm I'm saying I thought Jen might be coming with something, but Jen might actually be the one that's on the up and up, honey, and she might end up calling Brian out on his shit. You know, do we know if she's somebody that's actually an informant that the captain put to watch him to begin with or some type of eye or something? Or do we know if she's just really genuinely this partner that's worried about him? But nonetheless, they get meet you in the back of the car and of course he like stay with me dog stay with me dog draw T, draw T. stay with me stay with me you know and so of course they are saying that they were shocked you know that they in this situation again and they like no matter how hard you pray okay the devil finds you and that is basically 
how we end it off this episode, y'all. Who child, baby? And I bet you listen to Zoe next time. I'm just saying, Zoe kept trying to tell y'all that Zam Lamar was back, okay? We needed the because Lamar was popping up on that ass, y'all. He was popping up. So anyway, y'all, what the heck did y'all think about this episode? What do y'all think is going to happen? You know, Mama Flannery, Charles, and Lucille, I think is a wrap for them. I think they're going to go their separate ways. You know, it's so hard to say goodbye, but I think that's what they're going to do. All right. And, you know, is this what finally brings Terry back into the game, back into the fold? Of course, they're going to have to get down and dirty with them all. You know, is K-9 going to be intercepting into that? What's going to happen, y'all? Let's put it in the comments. Let's discuss anything that's left out, that I left out. Put that in the comments. You know, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see for the next episode, all that good stuff. Give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky, y'all. <laughs> okay, like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you were so inclined. Till next time, Tulu.